Hi, this is the Bible Touchdown. Last couple videos we discussed 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, and also chapter 4, verse 10. This video we're going to concentrate on 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. And these big three, these are sometimes appealed to by Armenians and Universalists and Pentelists and anybody against the five points, the doctrines of grace that are shown to be a consistent themes and propositions through scripture. These verses are sometimes isolated out of context. Like we'll see Second Peter chapter three verse nine says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now this isolated out of context for example, in most cases it's gonna be an Armenian or uh, someone with similar beliefs as an Armenian to show that God doesn't um, sovere sovereignly intervene with mankind that he allows an offering to or an offering for acceptance from from mankind to accept that is Jesus Christ's sacrifice instead of Christ being accepted by God and God accepting us as being found blameless from the imputed righteousness of Christ, but rather that God just sits back and he wishes that we wouldn't perish, but we choose ourselves to perish. And that he wishes we would come to repentance, but that mankind that doesn't believe or choose to believe by their own volition and power, that, you know, God can't do anything about that. Well, let's look a little bit more at the context here. We know that it's eschatological. We know that Peter says that there, in the last days there will be scoffers, those walking after their own lusts. And we see in verse 7 it says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in sore, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So we know that this judgment here, when some would be judged, those uh, ungodliness, those those of perdition, those that don't believe in the name of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, who are condemned already, who have the wrath of God abiding on them. We know that Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9 is not trying to say that God is going to universally save everybody because he doesn't want anybody to perish. We know that that's not the case. But, the concept of forbearance here or long suffering is going to be a theme I think we should take a deeper look at. Romans chapter 2 verses 3 to 5 it says thou man which doeth those things that thou shalt escape the judgment of God doing the things which you judge others of doing or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering not knowing the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance so, it says that but after thy hardness and impediment heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So we know God will righteously judge and justly and swiftly judge at the last day. Now, in Romans chapter 9, it says, What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction so right here we see long suffering here and if certainly God isn't willing that or doesn't take pleasure in anybody sinning against him or breaking his laws or committing transgression or being separated from him he takes no delight in that that is certainly true and even though he's prepared some vessels fitted for wrath and to be judged, he doesn't delight in this. But he takes that personal sacrifice because even, even those vessels of mercy, it says, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he hath afore prepared unto glory. Now those even those vessels of mercy, those were sinners. And he prepared them unto glory because he predestinated them through his foreknowledge that they would be imputed with the righteousness of Christ. Or that they would be elected and chosen by God based on 
Christ's glory and Christ's work and his finished accomplishments. So there were some vessels that were commit or fitted for wrath. And it says, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. So this includes all men, all kinds of men, Jews and Gentiles. But there are some men who will not be saved. And it's not that God didn't fit them for destruction, but he definitely doesn't enjoy that. Some are critical of the five points. So those doctrines of grace, which are consistent themes in scripture. For example, um, a limited atonement. They say that that's unfair for God to decide to make some people for judgment because God really loves us. Well, it's not really that it's unfair to man. But if anything, it would be unfair to God because he's the one taking all the suffering. He's the one that sacrifices his son for this. It's not like uh, those of grace have deserved this or anything, because everybody deserves judgment. So there's definitely long suffering here, and God isn't doesn't take pleasure and isn't willing that any should perish. But this is all to the the greater glory of God, and that His glory would be shown on those who He does elect. As always, grace be to you.